Good morning, everyone. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. That's Gary Trailer in the background. He's studying his word. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What say you? That's what the Lord tells us to do. It is 8.42 in the morning on a Thursday. Ah. <sighs> March 12, 2020. New day. New day. God has given us another day. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to talk about three little nouns. Three little nouns that mean a lot in our lives. Come on, let's pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this 12th day of March, 2020. Without you, we can do nothing. So we come to you, Lord, as humble as we can, asking you to forgive us. Please forgive us for all unrighteousness, creating us clean hearts, renew a right spirit. Help us, Lord, not only to be a reader of the word, but a doer. Let our hearts, Lord, glean from your passages, precious gems of scripture that we can sprinkle and the Holy Spirit can help us to discern on our way through this adventurous day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your Holy Spirit, for dying on Calvary, for renewing and restoring us in sleep, and blessing us with the beauties of this new day. We give you thanks this morning. We don't deserve you, Lord. We don't deserve your grace. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning to you. It is once again 8.44 on a Thursday morning, March 12th, the year is 2020. You know next week is uh, spring? Mm -hmm. Already spring. Time is moving on the wall, isn't it? That's part of life, honey. Time. What do you do in time? Well, some important things to do during the times of our life is to wait, to trust, and to hope. If you're a Christian and you've asked the Lord to come into your life and to save you and deliver you from powers of darkness and turn your life around and give you success and prosper you, then you will learn how to wait. Now, waiting is written in the Bible, and, and it's, it's done by uh, God's people all over. I mean, it's all throughout the Bible. We're waiting, waiting in time. Our time and God's time is two different uh, categories. We are in time. God is not in time. Okay? He's in eternity. He always was. Always will be. And one day we will enter into eternity with him. We are promised that. We're promised that through eternal life. That's a gift. One of God's gifts. Waiting. Trusting and hoping. There are nouns, you know. Noun is the name of a person, place, or thing, if I can remember. Well, David wrote about uh, waiting. And this is what David found out during his waiting time. Because, you know, during your waiting time, uh, you are learning to delay actions until a particular time. And... Uh, you're learning to delay that action because you could get ready and do something, but you want to make sure you are at the right time. You're doing it in the right time. David learned that during his waiting, he could pray. And he prays a prayer in uh, Psalm 27. Verses 11 to 14. Psalm 27, 
11 to 14. It says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Sounds like David had some problems in his life. Like you and I, he had enemies. Okay, he had false witnesses rise up against uh, him. Have you ever had any false witnesses rise up against you? Someone who breathed out cruelty? Well, if you're uh, doing God's business and you are trying to live uprightly and do God's will, you will have enemies. Okay? You will have enemies. Jesus had enemies. Okay? David consulted the Lord with this issue. The times he was waiting. And if you remember David, he had enemies in his family. He had enemies outside of his family. He was called for a special purpose. He was called for a special purpose, like you and I. We're called according to a purpose. We are to fulfill something. And because of us, there are others that are going to receive the Lord and 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 get saved and and trust in Him, and we're we're uh, making a way for them to get to glory. We are exhibiting God's God consciousness through the salvation plan that He has provided for us, and others are going to see that work in you as you glorify God in your life. So David learned to wait on the Lord. But while he waited, he talked to the Lord. And he asked the Lord humbly to teach him how to wait. You ever asked the Lord to teach you how to wait? I never asked him to teach me how to wait. It was a given. Here, this is for you. Wait on it. Mm -hmm. I knew when I was younger, I was very impatient. I wanted those kids to grow up so quickly. I wanted all my freedom, and I wanted this, and I wanted that. I wanted to excel on my job. I wanted and oh, would wait impatiently. But David asked the Lord, teach him how to wait. He wanted the Lord to lead him in a plain path. When you are not waiting on the Lord and you're uh, uh, trying to go about life in your own, your own fruition, your own way, you'll find your way uh, full of treacherous pathways. You usually go down the wrong path path. You usually make the wrong turn, say the wrong thing, take up the wrong career, uh, and, and become detrimental not only to yourself but to others, to the lives of family members. Okay, but always inquire of the Lord. Lord, teach me how to wait. Show me what to do while I'm waiting. Things to do while you're waiting. And things that will happen while you're waiting. Because we are waiting. We're waiting. All of the world is waiting. Okay? We're worry, waiting right now to find out which way and which, what to do. We're waiting to see how God will bring forth his return. And these are very interesting times we're living in. Aren't they? What are you waiting on? I know while we're waiting, we can uh, fall into uh, periods of, 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 of sadness. We can become depressed. We can become frustrated or anxious. 
okay? Which is definitely against what the Lord would have us to do. Okay, the importance of waiting is that during the time of waiting, the time period will sift away things from your life that you don't need. There'll be people that you have joined up with that will be sifted away from you. You will find God's hand in every minute of your day if you're trusting in him. Okay? The people that actually you've joined with, some of them breathe out cruelty like they had in David's day. You can befriend enemies. You can befriend people that are not in your corner. And they're not for you. Okay? Time has a way of just dividing the fluff from the real stuff. Okay? You're wondering why people fall off from you while they go their way and live their lives? Because they're not meant for this walk with you. And then the real people who love you and are going to pray for you and stand beside you, those people will remain in your lives. Keep your eyes open for those people. Okay? That's from waiting. Something we have trouble doing. Perseverance. Perseverance will be found during your waiting period. It's, it's a time of emotional, physical, and spiritual workout. Emotionally, you are learning to be still. Physically, you are learning to keep going through the, 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 the days that are, are not the best, days when the sun doesn't shine, days when the storms, the storm clouds are over your head, days when you are not feeling your best. Spiritually, you're growing by trusting in him the more. Every day, you are hearing God's word. You're opening up his word to hear what he has to say about your situation. And as you go, the Holy Spirit will bring that word up out of you while you are waiting. Perseverance is developed while you're waiting. And then while you're waiting, you're learning to rest. And you are becoming refreshed. It creates a space in your life. You know, we like to move all the time, get going, do this, have that going. But waiting, it's a precious time to get in touch with what's going on inside of you. What's going on inside of you while you're waiting? You're not rushing around doing things for yourself. What's developing in you? It's called perseverance. It's called self-discovery. What am I thinking about right now as I'm waiting? Am I learning how to control my mind and trust God? Am I thinking on his goodness and thanking him for his goodness? Can I remember what he's done for me in the past while I wait for him to do this thing that I have goal, this goal in my life? Am I trusting him? Now, trusting is a different uh, word from waiting. Okay? We wait on the Lord, as David said, and he tells us to be of good courage. And he believes that God strengthens our heart. And he does. But you notice this too. David confronted the Lord and asked him for that perseverance. For that self-discovery. What's happening inside of me, Lord? Calm me down.
help me to trust you. This anxious feeling, it's not of God. It's from the enemy. So Lord, help me not to fear, to lay fear aside. That doesn't come from you, Lord. I keep in contact while I'm waiting. Now trust. In John 14, 5 to 6, the disciples were with the Lord. And uh, Thomas spoke out and said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how do we know the way? And Jesus answered him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hmm. I don't know which way to go, Lord. Each time they confront the Lord about the journey. I don't know which way to go, Lord. And Jesus tells them, follow me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the light. Trusting in the Lord is something you learn to do. Okay? Trust and faith is two different things, you know. Okay? Trust is confidence or reliance on a person or um, dependence upon someone for future hope. Now, when you trust in the Lord, it is because of the faith you have in that subject, in that person. Now, faith is given as a gift. It's a gift, okay? It says, uh, for it is by grace you have saved, you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Trusting God is a consequence or a result or an action based on the condition of faith. You have to have faith to trust. Okay? So trusting God and having faith is two different things. Faith comes from God. And if you look into the, the memories in your lifetime, if you look way back in the beginning, you made a decision to have faith in God. And from that time on, you began to trust in Him. You trusted Him and you didn't lean to your own understanding because you knew that God would take you out. He, he would take you through this. So it's a, a faith that brings trust. Okay, through that faith, you began to love. Okay, you felt God's love on the inside of you when you received him as Savior, and then you began to trust him. If you don't love a person, you won't trust them. Do you find yourself not trusting someone? Okay then there's something wrong with the love. Because perfect love casteth out fear. Okay? While we're waiting, we have to trust God. He loved us. He first loved us. He took us up out of the muck and the mire of life. He, he, he took the cobwebs and the, oh gosh, just cleaned us up and strengthened us and caused our golden moments to roll on. He died for us. He suffered and shed his blood on our behalf. He loved us before the foundation of the world. And then he shed his love upon us. Can we trust him? Has he given us that faith as a gift? The Bible says he has. By grace we were saved. Unmerited favor, grace. Through faith it is not of ourselves. There's nothing about our salvation that came from us. It came from God. It is the gift of God. Faith is the gift of God. 
And trust is the consequence of having faith in God. Okay, another uh, 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 noun that you'll find while you're waiting on God is to hope. Hope is confident expectation. The feeling that what is wanted can be had or the events will turn out for the best. How do Christians hope? Well, in Romans 8, 24 to 25, it says, For in this hope we are saved. In hope we are saved. Hallelujah. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? I don't. If I have a, a, a flower, why would I hope that one day there'll be a flower sitting on that coffee table? If I hope for a, a, a breakfast... I will not just sit here and, and believe that breakfast is made already. Okay? I am hoping for events that will turn out. What are the events? I will get up and make me some breakfast. Okay? Hoping. That's how we live. That's our salvation. We're hoping. In that hope, we're saved. We're confident that God will bring about the things that he promised us in his word. Ephesians 3, 20 to 21 says, Now unto him who's able to do immeasurably more than whatever we ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us. What power? The Holy Ghost power. It worketh within us. And we have a hope as the anchor for the soul. When you find that mind going a little loopy, and you will these days, listen to the news. Listen to what they're saying about that uh, virus, about that other virus, some something 19, this, that. Listen to what they're saying about the stock market. Listen to what they're saying about one another. If you listen too long, this gets all out of kilter. And you'll hear voices all day long, on the phone, on the television, on the radio, that will try to capture your attention and lead you from that blessed hope that is an anchor for the soul. We hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our salvation. He's our keeper. He's our deliverer. He's our strength. And he knows how much you can bear. That hope is the anchor. Okay, why do we hope for stuff we don't have? You know, uh, stuff that we see. We don't hope for things that we don't see. We are hoping in the Lord's return. That's why we're keeping our eyes on him. We know he's on his way back. Don't fear. Don't quake. While you are hoping, listen and wait for the Lord's uh, uh, a glimmer of what the Lord is doing. And you'll hear it and see it. And you, oh, your mind will hardly believe. Is he really coming back? What's happening? What is happening right now is what is in the word. Pestilence, earthquake, uh, wars, rumors of wars, uh, uh, men loving pleasures, idolizing, uh, antichrist spirit. You'll see it more and more as, as his day approaches. Okay, in Hebrews 6, 18 to 20, God did... This so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. God encourages us through hope. Yes, he does. Open his word. Read his word. While you're waiting, occupy until he comes. Trust in him. Mm-hmm. Let God anchor your soul. Let him anchor your soul and keep you from being frantic 
and fearful. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and I don't know if I could explain it any bit. I probably could. Maybe somewhere down the road, I can live as a an example. There have been times I would jump off a sidewalk had it not been for the Lord Jesus Christ. I know he's a keeper and he's an anchor for my soul. I'm a living witness. He can do immeasurably more than what we ask or think. May God bless you today and keep you. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case.